Okay, let's do this. Okay, we're recording now uh, with the 11th grade A. What a pleasure. On a Wednesday, 24th of March. Today, we're going to check some stuff on Neopad. Um, all of them connect to fake news and a bit of fun. And also, we're going to uh, set up the homework number three. Okay, uh, today's vocabulary is connected to expressions. Okay, if you are in the street or if something, if you have a plan and doesn't work, you say, uh, what a bummer. What a bummer. What does it mean? Ah, what a bummer. If you have a plan and it doesn't work. It's a disappointment. Yes, it's like, uh, what a shame. It's similar to that. What a bummer. Okay, let's say um, there's a movie in the cinema and then they uh, they stop showing the movie in the cinema. Ah, what a bummer. Gelata, same. Uh, if you say, for example, uh, if you listen to Mana all day and you dedicate Mana songs to, to the people you love, people will say, ah, you're so cheesy. What's that? Mana so cheesy. What do you think that is? Oh, if you're saying, I don't know, like quotes from romantic films and uh, saying stuff that are quite, you know, like when you when you hear them, you, you feel like, eh, that's cheesy. Cheesy means like too romantic, like. Um, oh, my cursi. Yeah, yeah, that is the thing. Corny, corny, cheesy. That's those two are synonym. Cursi, that's the thing. Corny is a synonym. Quite corny and cheesy. Now, uh, if a person is flaky, usually um, this person is between two things and doesn't know what to choose. What is that? In the season, is it? Mm -hmm. Indecisive, yes. A flaky person. This is very common. Flaky instead of saying in, undecisive. Indecisive, which is very long. So if you screw up something, what's that? Usually say, I'm sorry. Some people don't say, but. Echala perder. Arruinarlo. Yeah. Arruinarlo. Okay. So if you, if you screwed something, usually you say, sorry, my bad. I screw it. It's on me. Okay, good. Uh, there are some recommendations here, mostly books and some movies from out of here. Uh, Frankenstein, especially Sleepy Hollow is a movie. The Shining is a movie also, and Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. All right, people, let's continue. Let's go near pod because today's a short class. All righty. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, today is uh, on. Uh, we're not going to have the time to check the weather report, but yes, yes, fake news, and also homework number three. I wanted to start this class with a bit of fun, and uh, just to show you that news are not that boring sometimes. Usually, we can have, like, uh, funny people being interviewed. In this case, we have this little kid. I don't know if I can activate these the subtitles, but let me see. Video quality, timer, no, I don't know. Uh, maybe yes. Uh, let's try, let's try. What did you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, Dad. I've never been on live time. Okay, let me find it in, on YouTube. It will be better. <laughs> uh, I have this kid. Live Dad. television before, but... Apparently, sometimes. Apparently, that's the name of the kid. Okay, he's called apparently the apparently kid. Let me show it to you with uh, with subtitles because it's a little kid, and sometimes they, you know, they, it's difficult to understand. Uh, the apparently. The apparently boy. That's it. Okay. Yes, this is awesome. A bit of introduction, a fun thing, uh, subtitles, yes. All right, you guys ready? 
let's have a go. What did you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before, but apparently sometimes I don't watch the sh I don't watch the news because I'm a kid and apparently every time apparently Grandpa just gives me the remote after we watch the Powerball. It's the Powerball. <laughs> Tell me about the ride. What did you think about the ride? Well, it was great. What? No, I want. What? What's going on with the subtitles? One second. Weird. What did you think? But why in Spanish? I don't want them Spanish. Oh, well, here, Spanish. Uh, translate options. Uh, language. Hell, language. What is that? No. Okay. English. English. What? Okay. There we go. I think. Think about the ride. It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before. But apparently, sometimes I don't watch the. Sh I don't watch the news because I'm a kid. And apparently, every time, apparently. It gr what is this thing doing? Have you ever had this problem with the the subtitles? They go what did crazy. You think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before. Okay, fail. No, not good. Not good. Not good. Oh, he's famous now. Okay, let's do it in Spanish. All right. <laughs> Second. What did you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before, but apparently sometimes I don't watch the sh I don't watch the news because I'm a kid and apparently every time apparently grandpa just gives me the remote after we watch the Powerball. It's the Powerball. <laughs> Tell me about the ride. What did you think about the ride? Well, it was great. Because apparently you're spinning around, and apparently every time you get dizzy, yeah. that's all you do is get dizzy. Is it fun? Yeah. <laughs> and I've never ever been on live television. I never ever be on live television. Are you excited? Yeah, and apparently I only went down the super slide. When I went down the wall, I was scared half to death. I just freak out. Okay, okay. Right. What? I need his name. Hold on. Yep. Hold on. I'm just gonna ask him. What's his name? Noah. Noah. What's your last name? Dick Ritter. How do you spell your? How do you spell his last name? Ritter. R I T T E R. Okay. Where are you guys from? Wilkesbury. Wilkesbury. All right, buddy. Good stuff. Have fun. Come to security. There's a boy here looking for you. Uh, have you ha, had you seen the video before? No. No. Yes. Apparently. No. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's continue. All right. So today is on fake news. Okay. So we we have here some examples of fake news. For example, Elvis is alive, running for president. Um. Baby performs Shakespeare in another piece of news. Vladimir Putin is a robot. Maybe not. Man bitten in a half by shark lives. Terrifying photo underwater. Probably fake news. The Loch Ness monster captured. Beast is 70 feet long and weighs 20 tons. Uh, a snake with a human head found in Arkansas. Is it Satan himself or just a freak of nature? Wow, well, ugly. What else? I brought Elvis back to life. Priestley's uh, doctor revealed for the first time now. So again. And finally, Bigfoot keep, uh, kept Lumberjack as love slave. <laughs> He's no longer the man I married. 
No way. Do you guys believe in uh, Bigfoot? Oh, the jetty, they call it. Do you guys believe in that? No. Not really? It could be. Yeah, it could be. Who knows? I don't know. The, the planet is so big that probably there, there must be weird stuff going on. All right. Let's go to collaboration now. So the question is, what are talking about fake news like the ones that we just saw? What consequences may bring to people? What consequences might bring to people? I'm gonna give you two minutes. Let's do it. People. Let me see, maybe it's my internet. Mm -hmm. Misinformation. Panic, yeah, I agree, panic. Luciana Gomez, the goat. Palula de Pulentes. Towers Christ. Uh, they can make people take unnecessary measures for prevention. Oh yes, like for example, supermarkets are running out of food. So people, they would take unnecessary measures like going to, going to buy the supermarket and get everything they can. Disinformation, misinformation is the correct word, misinformation. People might, people might believe the lies and depending on the fake news, they could freak out, yes. Absolutely. Ignorance and disinformation. Misinformation can trigger a major event in chaos. Uh, wrong knowledge about different topics can lead to controversies. Yes, that's true. That's true. Especially in a conversation, they would say, "Wasn't that true?" They, they're talking with you know a lot of confidence about something, and in the end, it wasn't true. Being a threat, panic, ignorance. Fright and doubts. Fright, mm, that's a good word. My influence in some decisions. So it could be chaos. Chaos is C H A O S. Like chaos, collective anger. Uh, first thing I'm not real, I'm misunderstanding. I agree, yes. Can you give a like? Chaos. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's a difficult word, I think. Chaos. Because it sounds chaos and not chaos. So people will, will be scared for nothing. Yes, yes. So that, that's why it's so dangerous right now in today's, today's age. Uh, social media and all of the press have to be very, very careful with what we read. All right, so I know your opinion. So we have misinformation, chaos, and may lead to wrong decisions also. Collective anger, panic, ignorance. Good. Let's move to the next activity. 
In next activity, we're gonna watch this sh short video and there are some questions in the video that I would like you to answer. These questions are short, okay? And the video is short, it's only just three minutes. Okay, let's do it. Uh, be careful with the volume, please. Uh, this is about fake news. There's a quote usually attributed to the writer Mark Twain that goes, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its... Okay, here we go. Again. There's a quote usually attributed to the writer Mark Twain that goes, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Funny thing about that. There's reason to doubt that Mark Twain ever said this at all. Thus, ironically, proving the point. Like a double subtitle. Fingers off. Okay, what the quote of Mark Twain means. Do you want me to put it again? Yes, please. Okay, sure. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. No se vio, oh. Okay, uh, let me see if I can do it again. Oh yes, I can. Let me get it. Good, uh, get it go. I mean, and a chira. Aquí voy, pero es que tengo un drama con el tema de subtítulos. Ya no quiero subtítulos. But anyways, let's go. There's a quote usually attributed to the writer Mark Twain that goes, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Funny thing about that, there's reason to doubt that Mark Twain ever said this at all. Thus, ironically, proving the point. Okay. Huh? Palula lies. Yeah, yeah, but what's the idea? Lies what? La chira, yeah. No, teacher, que aún no terminaba. Ah, okay. You can, I think you can resend it. Yes, not cheetah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, it means the lies spread a lot, a lot faster than the truth. Ah, lies spread faster. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. They spread faster than the truth. So a lie, they say, and there's something in Spanish. There is a, there's like a saying in Spanish about lies. Las mentiras tienen pies, algo así le dicen. Mentira tiene pies. Algo así, no, I can't remember why. Okay, let's continue. The line is faster than the truth, so the truth is always is not always known. Oh, that's that's nice. Uh, a lie pro propagates faster and easier than the truth. The lie spread than the truth. Yeah, good. Let's continue. Okay, we get the point. Right. Point. And today, the quote, whoever said it is truer than ever before. In previous decades, most media with global reach consisted of several major newspapers and networks which had the resources to gather information directly. Outlets like Reuters and the Associated Press that aggregate or re-report stories were relatively rare compared to today. 
Question again, why was it more difficult to spread the news in the past? Yeah, good. Cepilla más rápido, mentiroso que un ladrón. Claro. Claro, porque la, la mentira se expande tan rápido que finalmente todos conocen una versión distinta de lo que se dijo. Y uno dice, ah, entiendo. Because the lack of digital press, because the lack of resources, because the lack of professionals. Antonio Cuevas. Antonio Cuevas. Look at the chat we're working on nearby. Yeah, because the lack of digital press okay so in the past you know paper was the only thing let's continue oh no but it up sorry i screwed it up i screwed it up dang oh okay i can't continue from the same place compared to today the speed with which information spreads now has created the ideal conditions for a phenomenon known as circular reporting This is when publication A publishes misinformation, publication B reprints it, and publication A then cites B as the source for the information. It's also considered a form of circular reporting when multiple publications report on the same initial piece of false information, which then appears to... So the question should be then, how can people validate information? by trusting your most proximate source, by asking social media, by consulting the original source. Barbie, what's the meaning of source? Boy, what's the source? The source. It is recurso. The source? Mm, fuente, ah, fuente. Source, yes, fuente, source. Resources, yes, recursos. Resource. Uh, this case is source, only source. Yeah, consulted the original source. Source. The problem is that there is so many things now that you don't. You have to investigate a lot to get the original resource, uh, the original source. I got confused with the words again. You have to investigate a lot to get to the point, to get to the origin of the story. All right, let's carry on. Here's to another author as having been verified by multiple sources. For instance, the 1998 publication of a single pseudoscientific paper arguing that routine vaccination of children causes autism inspired an entire anti-vaccination movement, despite the fact that the original paper has repeatedly been discredited So possible consequences may this decision have caused? The newspaper article, the children were immune to some diseases, the children were born with an autistic syndrome, or the children contracted diseases that were controlled before. Like you mentioned uh, in the comments, I think it was Valent Valentina and a lot of people, is that if you're misinformed, misinformed, you may make wrong decisions. Okay? You may make wrong decisions. So that's bad. In this case, the decision is not to not to vaccine or not to give you a jab to your to your children. And as a consequence, they may die because of, you know. TBC and other things. Um, uh, right now, there is a there is this uh, thing. What is it called? Sarampion? No, varicella. Yes, they call it in the chicken pox. 
chicken pox uh, in Germany because of, you know, uh, a lot of people, chicken, chicken pox, varicella. So the thing is that people don't believe that it's real, right? They say that vaccines, they can give you autism. So they, the parents, they make wrong decisions. So that's why fake news is so dangerous. Let's continue. ...by the scientific community. Deliberately unvaccinated children are now contracting contagious diseases that had been virtually eradicated in the United States, with some infections proving fatal. In a slightly less dire example, satirical articles that are formatted to resemble real ones can also be picked up by outlets not in on the joke. For example, a joke article in the reputable British Medical Journal, entitled Energy Expenditure in Adolescents Playing New Generation Computer Games, has been referenced in serious science publications over 400 times. User-generated content such as wikis are also a common contributor to circular reporting. As more writers come to rely on such pages for quick information, an unverified fact in a wiki page can make its way into a published article that may later be added as a citation for the very same wiki information, making Unverified information, that's another vocabulary word. Unverified information. So have you ever found an unverified wiki article, like a wiki article which has been modified? Have you ever find, found one? And can you remember which one? Or do you guys do you guys use Wikipedia, for example, when you're looking for information? Do you guys use Wikipedia? When you're doing, you know, homework and stuff. Yes. Yes, Kine, good. Okay, for example, yeah, lots of time. It's an interesting, it's an everyday thing in the world. Yeah, video games, yes, they are faking information about uh, studios and other stuff. Misguiding, misguiding, guiar de mala forma, misguiding the conversation. And this is misguiding information. It, it takes you to another place that you, uh, which is not the truth, right? For example, uh, I think it was a few days ago. Did you did you see the the uh, the wiki page of the Minister of Health, Enrique Paris, was modified? Thank you, thanks, Ignacia. Did you see that, people? Are the information from? Um, I, no? think, I think yes. Yeah, from the Minister of Health. Uh, Enrique Paris was modified and uh, you know instead of saying you know Dr. Chile minister it's he it said a lot of you know bad words bans ah. oh there's a meme Wikipedia helps you you only need to verify yes so you have to do like double work because you have to verify uh, I, I heard that in the biography of John Lennon, it said he was named John Lennon Perez. <laughs> El primer país de Chile. Ese mismo, esa misma persona, lo cierto. Ya yeah, Enrique París salía en uno, bueno, malas palabras en realidad de, 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 de esta persona making it much harder to debunk. Recent advances in communication technology have had immeasurable benefits in breaking down the barriers between information and people. But our desire for quick answers may overpower the desire to be certain of their validity. And when this bias can be multiplied by billions of people around the world nearly instantaneously, more caution is in order. Avoiding sensationalist media searching for criticisms of suspicious information 
and tracing the original source of a report can help slow down a lie, giving the truth more time to put on its shoes. Slow down a lie. I'm going to take this last things. Uh... Millions of people around the world nearly instantaneously. More caution is in order. Avoiding sensationalist media, searching for criticisms of suspicious information, and tracing the original source of a report can help slow down a lie, giving the truth more time to put on its shoes. All right. Goody. Okay, so these three last things, I think, are quite important. Uh, we're not going to stop on the weather, but I think, guys, you, we have finished the class, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bummer that it's so short. But anyways, I'm going to write them here. How you can avoid... Um, you have to avoid sensationalist media or press. How to avoid uh, fake news. Searching for criticism. Criticism. What's it also that Z? Now we're both. And also tracing the original source. What's the meaning of trace? Rastrear. Yes, rastrear. So rastrear la, el origen, yeah, the information. Okay, so I'm going to post this homework because I'm going to finish here. Uh, this homework is very simple. What you're going to do is that uh, uh, I'm going to upload this part and here I put the different sections of a newspaper, uh, say front cover, I would say. Yes, for example, we have the title, like El Dia is the flag. The byline is who wrote the article. For example, video games are wrong by Benjamin Kine. By Benjamin Kine is the byline. The headline is video games are wrong. Sometimes there is a sub headline, for example, uh, okay, video, video games are wrong and children are exposed. I don't know, something, a photo. A cut line is like a like a detail uh, next to the picture or behind the picture. Sorry, below the picture. It explains the picture a little bit. And then the body of, of the news. So what you're going to do in this homework number three, it's quite simple. What you're going to do is to create a piece of fake news. Invent something that is unreal and that people maybe would believe something about a monster, something about something very ridiculous that could be on a newspaper. So I just wanted to write it down. Okay, write it down in a Google Docs document. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to, to do all these things like a newspaper style. But if you want to do it, if you want to do it like a newspaper style, you can do it, you can design something like this. But it's to write a piece of news or fake news including the headline, a caption, the cut line, byline, the flag, and the body, and two examples of reported speech. Okay, that would be the homework number three. And for this homework, uh, it's a bit bigger, so we're going to give you something for this. Any questions about this? People? All righty, you're not here. All right. It was a pleasure. I will see you next time. On Monday, I'm going to post the homework today. So you're going to have more than a week. I'm going to give you more time. I'm going to give you until next Friday. All right, people. Pleasure. I'll see you around. See you. Bye.